when you, this globalization change word or the phrase or, or the issue or the terms or the thought you didn't it's not new right you heard it many many times ago maybe perhaps even though when you are born but again the debate still continue right like other previous school of thought you have the original globalization then the new or like, like the new materialism and original materialism you have also new development on population in this case you notice that recently or about five or five years ago you notice this globalization trend actually reverse right i have in this case we sometimes we call reverse globalization or sometimes we call the globalization okay. now what is globalization theory and definition right? of course if you want to do a research project or research on globalization you need to be have a very objective definition right? until now the globalization has been debated but so far you have one kof globalization index so that one we should have taken that as an objective of the globalization right now Chronologically, globalization theory is an extension of modernization theory. One of the characteristics that link these two theory in the con in the concern on human civilization, right? So you link the modernization with the globalization with the modernization. Right? Theory and debate in various aspects shift from locally to globally. Right? Force uh, which include universal human morality, quality of life, global awareness, and world matter, global cooperation, politics, especially globally established institution. So, long time ago, we were only focused on domestically. Right? Some of the thought, right, you know, like virtualism, we also focused on how to improve lo uh, domestic economy. But then, this globalization thought actually shift the focus to how we can cooperate globally, then this is we set a global standard on human morality on human rights right on global uh, global environmental issue all this thing right so, and, and especially global institution so example is a minimum living standard for all country in the united nation not the minimum standard not the environmental uh, concern of one or few particular country is all the country so you also so see that now we have sustainable development goal this sustainable development goal actually apply or or a promise by all the country in the united nation right it's not only just for few selected country now what are the definition of globalization there are a lot of different kind of definition of globalization different people give different because globalization cover a variety of aspect include social economy and politics but perhaps mostly will be more on economics uh, right? and social and right? social economics so some of the characteristic that related to globalization and their reference right is the global community right we claim that now we don't focus on malaysian uh, uh you 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 uk citizen or europe right or asian more focus on global community then we have uh, the world as one, so universal consciousness, so all those is universal global village. That one, one is a more popular term, right? But of course, some people will claim that uh, in this case, it's not really village. In, the, in this case, it's not really represent what it means because it's a city, so it's called global city or global village. But global village really mean uh, like the whole thing, like including city, like borderless world. Then political action that change the relationship, the integrated political action. As now we can see that even a conflict in Russia and U Ukraine, far from Malaysia, far from South Africa, far from Australia, New Zealand. So, but the impact a bit here and there also you can you can you can feel that the impact is there, right? Or at least the attention or the consciousness or the awareness is there. So it's global. It's no more. It's no more localized. Right? You know, so evolution international system then dependency and network so dependency and network is one of the uh, important characteristic right because if you are operating to uh, cooperating globally so we depend on each other right then homogenize homogenization right? we standardization right? now summarizing the summarizing different scope idea and definition has the following characteristic right if you summarize everything 
you can at least pinpoint some of the con repeatingly characteristic thing. First is the world and human are seen as a whole unit. Integration between social and, and or in this case, include cultural, political, and economic unit into a unit broad of network. Okay. Here, I always uh, emphasize is that sometimes economic students they only study economic, 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 read only also economic textbook, right? Only, right? But sometimes you study economic in your research or whatever. There is also a need to see how the social impact the economics. How the political impacts the economy. Right? For example, you have some how to say you even though now uh, you study uh, industry, you have uh, agriculture, uh, service sector, but of course then later on you have this so-called creative industry and this creative industry like right, film, arts, all these things, arts industry. You, know, you also link it to the social, right? Social. The role of social also you can capture nowadays in so-called institutional economics, where the informal institutional uh, quality of institutional economics uh, is actually social culture. Even though in the uh, in the uh, Marxism also you will see constrained by superstructure. Some of these superstructure are this culture. For example, if your culture asks you to must wake up at. Uh, 10 o'clock cannot wake up uh, before 10 o'clock. So in this case, this culture will actually constrain your economy, right? So culture, political economy are more seen as a unit broad. An action of stimulant from one unit in the wide network will affect the response from others unit in the network. So let's see if uh, I got, I remember last time when there is a very bad flood, right? Not only in Malaysia, but in Thailand, in Southeast Asia, right? So because of I think it's a bad flood or or and also there's like like last time there was one Thailand protest right long time ago so you caused the production in Thailand to be uh, disrupted so some company that really depend on the spare part or whatever yeah, input intermediate input from Thailand actually has no choice but stop production because no input of production now you also see that. China, they lock down on a COVID whenever they find the COVID cases is a bit high, they lock down, right? Other country, they don't lock down. So production stop. So when production stop, if let's say country A produced uh, uh, like intermediate or input of one of the input of production, let's say car, like, let's say country A produce uh, engine, country B produce the uh, another engine two component. So if country A and country B stop production countries see who import these two engine and put into the car they cannot produce so therefore there is a dependency right so one unit of network will affect the others the development of transportation and communication of infrastructure is a driver for integration process right so history of globalization the debate on globalization is almost everything right include it, or when is the starting point for the globalization? When you think it is started, different people give different answer. So the confusion and diversity, diversity of definition of globalization make it difficult for researchers to reach a common point. When globalization start, the term globalization is said to have first used in 1960. However, there is little agreement on when the globalization began. Right? So among the consider or among the, the one that most hotly debated is when the globalization began or when the globalization, globalization start, the massive expansion of European city took place in the 16th century, right? following the first uh, navigation of the world between 1951 and 1521 by Ferdinand Magellan. I think this one you should have no. Right. But you can say that time this person already traveled around the world, so already globalized, the globalization already start. So when they travel around the world, they had made up the, the road, the trolling road, in this case by sea around the world. So European people now can go to everywhere more often, but then in this case, they say it's a start of globalization. But of course, you notice if this is a start of globalization, it's not as intense as they right? But if you take this theory as correct, there is another theory say that 
before this Ferdinand Magellan travel around the world, the Zheng He like, already explored uh, the world, right? Claim by Gary Messer. So in this case, if this first theory is considered correct, then the second theory, which is the earlier date, should be also considered correct. So in this case, the globalization is not 1521, it's 1421, right? But of course, the massive expansion of the world trade and investment at the end of the 19th century will be a more credible definition or people will tend to use this one as more. So globalization, mostly they associate with international trade or world trade, right? international flow of foreign direct investment, and international linkage of the economy. If you study business subject, you will notice this so-called multinational corporation. Right? This multinational corporation actually uh, started to grow rapidly in the 19th century. World trade uh, grew rapidly in the 19th century. So the develop, this development, however, come to a halt during the outbreak of the First World War and an anti free trade protectionist. Right? So during that time, people will claim that it's uh, correct. Uh, event to like to claim it's the start of the globalization. Right? In another sense, also, some may say that the world state to be united when there is an international accepted GMT Greenwich Maritime Time. Right? So sometimes you have you nowadays when you have, have hybrid or you an online conference, online seminar, webinar, you can attend. Maybe not in US, UK, Australia, Indonesia, uh, Middle East, right? Anyway, then they put the time. So usually, if it's an international event, they will put it's local time to you convert yourself, or they said sometimes they put GMT, Green Week, and time. So I think Malaysia and England, and you say plus seven or plus this. No, so you just adjust based on this Green Week, and then we in mean time, right? And except of Georgian calendar, is a normal calendar. Because last time you also have Islamic calendar and you have a uh, uh, Chinese lunar calendar. And then the end of World War II brought to another major expansion of capitalism, right? Especially the fall of the Soviet Union at the time, right? When development uh, uh, later on when the fall of Soviet Union. Also, but at the end of the Second World War, you see that the, the, the expansion of capitalism, that multinational company invest in production and sales of the country domestic market. So after the World War II, it's another round of global activity which involve trade, international trade, foreign direct investment, right? set up companies, and not to forget also international financial transaction. Right? You can more easily to transfer money from one place to another place so after the 19th century and after World War II. Then, of course, one of the another popular start of the conversation is the fall of the Berlin Wall, right? Collapse of the Soviet Union. Because at that time, really don't have, uh, this means that don't have a really clear cut that you are, you support socialism, I support uh, capitalism. So, in this case, I don't trade with you, you don't trade with me. So, in this case, after the fall of Berlin Wall, right, you see that war has been, people who believe this. Advocate for this one, they believe that the world finally united as one, right? So no more body war to separate separate the world. Then the development of internet in this case had made it possible for business, but of course the development of internet will be much later on, right? Before the development of internet, you also see that there's a lot of international trade, all these things. So, so then from an economic perspective, the current globalization is considered to begin with the deregulation of and liberalization of the world. Like this one, you can see that there's uh, always a uh, effort or, or or action to ask other country, especially the developed country, to deregulate and liberalize. If you study economic development, right, you also come across this so-called Washington consensus, right, and then uh, so some some of the free trade agreement. All these things is actually called for you to deregulate liberalize and welcome foreign investment, foreign trade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dispute or opinion, all these things regarding everything, you can still have some theoretical approach on globalization. Of course, this theoretical approach will be divided into three. 
what is hyper globalization what is skeptic group hyper globalization actually say that really really support the globalization everything is also good skeptical group will feel like skeptical like skeptic group like they really don't support globalization and they really think globalization is just uh, like a manipulation of ideas only like for example in during the uh, earlier covid uh covid case right still got some people think that this covid is not real it's only made up by some politician for their own gain or made up by some people for their own gain right covid is just normal flu they just make it up it's not real so this skeptic group uh, have a similar thing like just globalization is not new it's just only increase in trade only it's not really globalization people just put a name there and then uh, make it big like sound big is actually nothing oh, it's a skeptic group of course the transformation group will be in between uh, right so they set uh, under they, they form a set of, or represent a set of understanding on a phenomenon of the globalization okay now this was the hyper globalized hyper global and a skeptical stream or a group of thought is considered a hard thesis one is fully supposed and one is fully against right while the transformation stream is considered as a soft uh, yes and in this another hand also no so it's just an in between right? so, conceptualization of globalization this of this true true of thought right for the hyper hyper global school of thought what is new thing they say is a global era like what we are now seeing here say oh sooner or later you have a new industrial era new era for industrialization new era for manufacturing or, or our work uh, our life you will not see it after after five years or ten years you will not you compare to ten years before and ten years in future you will completely see it's a different thing right so hyper global say is a global era. Right? And skeptic will say block trade and geo governments lower than the previous period is even worse, right? But transformation will say that oh, it's unprecedented level of global inconnected in the history. So uh, historically that not much connection as is now and it perhaps in the future. So you see, it's just a meter in the middle, right? Then hyper global is a global capitalism, global governance, global civil society. So capitalism, governance, uh, civil society, human rights, thing, not only a focus on local, right? other people, other country, right? it will be like global. Something happened to other part of the world also affected the another part. Then skeptic will say the world become less interdependent than it was in the 1980s. So again, it's a completely opposite when it said Con more connected is to become a global capitalism not only capitalism you become a global governors what happened in your country will actually affect my country also even though distance is how many thousand kilometers away but skeptic say no no it's actually reverse right of course that version is in a between then power of nation government decreased or increasingly erode right so here you will you, you have in the library also you have one book very interesting by Kenichi Ome say that the end of nation state nation state in this case represent the national government the end or the nation state already the end mean that the not the, all the country government collect is that the country government has no not as much power as they have previously have so where has the power gone in terms of for the hyper globalization school of thought right that's, that's school they will say that this government power actually goes to capitalists or already uh, go to like interconnected to the world it become the world governance right not the local government already yeah. for example one of the thought of this can show me is monetary policy right, may not be that efficient because the government cannot control the free flow of financial transaction right if the if the government increase the uh, interest rate right or re, or they have a directive straight away say that say, you cannot lend to and you cannot you have to reduce your lending right but if you are open a company here the local bank don't, don't want to lend to you you can always apply for a loan in an international bank then they can tt or what direct in link transfer then you can also get the money right so in this case you see they are less power right? then uh of course skeptic will be of completely different driving force of the economy in this case uh 
for capital of course, still the country and the market internally for, for the hyper global is a capitalism growth technology at a global level, right? So uh, all these things, uh, dominant motive uh, here, standardization, right? McDonald, all these things. You, you sometimes if you look, if you are one who like to go travel, right? You know that. <coughs> Let's say you go to Korea, wow, you want to buy a Korean shirt or Korean thing, right? But uh, you want to eat Korean food, but at the end you come back to Malaysia, you also got Korean food. You also got uh, a shirt made in Korea. You can also buy online, right? You go to US, you go to Australia, you go to New Zealand also, you can eat Korean food. You can also buy things made in Korea, right? So you can also eat the McDonald's and the McDonald's here and they are standardized. Of course, there are some step some customized right like Malaysia can come here la, nasi lemak la, right you in other country you you may have a non halal McDonald's right so a bit class uh, still got customization but mostly are standardization McDonald's has everywhere right so concept of globalization all this history then you see this way the end of nation state all these are different different uh, conceptualization based on the different school of thought for globalization. Right? But because of hyper global school of thought, they actually advocate their support and they believe in globalization compared to skeptic school of thought say that there is no globalization. This world is just great make up then the world is actually even less globalized or less interconnected. Right? They dispute everything. So in this case, we more focus on hyper globalization, but of course we also focus a bit on skepticism. Right? The school of thought for this hyper global school uh, not only strongly support, but also claim that the power of nation state is incapable of functioning and the ruling in the new global world. Right? So one of the very important aspect of this globalization theory, which is actually proposed by this hyper global school of thought is end of nation state. Of course, again, end of nation state, they mean, no, not mean that all the government collapse, no more government, right? right? Then you have a world government, no. but you have a world governance, right? right? You see, Malaysia, whatever Malaysia do in terms of human rights, all these things, you also be subject to constraint or, or punishment or reward by, by, by the whole world. For example, human rights or workers' discrimination in Malaysia, be, in this case, they have heard some case that Malaysian product cannot be exported to U US. It's been blocked or banned by the US custom because violation of the uh, of the uh, workers' uh, yeah, welfare or hu human rights right, in Malaysia. Right? And also, you will, sometimes you will see a lot of things like because of, of what happened in one state, they will ban the other state. Right? And global market and or oh, one more thing is also you see at the end of the power of nation state when back the ground now increase the interest rate you should make actually they also don't have much choices la, because because inflation now or inflation now is not caused by locker alone but it also caused by some global factor right so nothing much can the government done about it right Local factor is just purely local factor that is easier to solve, right? Then, of course, international monetary policy like US also increase the interest rate. Malaysia also have to increase the interest rate, otherwise, you impacted the current currency to go down. So, therefore, you see the decision of the Malaysia government or a local government or a nation state, right? It's not 100% alone based on domestic or what they wish to do. They are also have to be constrained by what other things have done or what is the global condition. So the power of the nation state in this case is less and less and less. Right? The function is more on administration. So this case may be like uh, uh, classic school, yeah, less minimum function. Right? Global market, global capitalism are more influential in the borders world. Role of government is limited to mere administration coordination right, for the market. In general, this hyper globalization group consists of neoliberal group, right? Adam Smith's style, style of market. So globalization school of thought are more compatible with this uh, uh, free market uh, 
classic school like Adam Smith, right? Invisible hand, democratic ideology, right? If you look at the world governance indicator by the World Bank, which represent the, the like the, the governance or institutional quality, you notice that they give a point like higher voice or voice and accountability, higher freedom, all these things is considered as good or high institutional quality. So when you give this definition like higher freedom, higher voice, higher human rights, right, is actually mean equal to higher institutional, you're actually supporting democratic ideology, right? So freedom and social right right? in a global context. Right? Now, both neoliberal and neo Marxist anti capitalism consider globalization to be an economic phenomena. So even Marxists also consider it's a global phenomena. Acceleration of economic integration. Again, economic integration, international, increase in international trade are some of the very important characteristics of this globalization. Right? So the need for global fund, right? Yet the neoliberals rejoice success of individual autonomy and market principle. Right? Consider globalization as a symbol to unjust success of the global capitalism. So the hyper global group does not outright deny the fact that neo Marxist claim, okay. he said this group admit that economic globalization produced new pattern of winner and loser. Okay. Marxist, the, the hyper globalization also didn't say that it's fair, right? Marxists always say that there is a winner and loser. Of course, the winner is the capitalist group, the loser is the worker or the labor group, right? The in this case, hyper globalization, hyper global group or the globalization theory actually indirectly also admit the same because they have a this whole not South country. Right? Then uh, you have this uh, lots of country describe developed country as a winner and backward country as a loser. Right? So neoliberal urge that economic globalization does not necessarily produce zero sum zero sum result. So certain group in the economy unit are negatively affected. Almost all countries have advanced over producing certain group and positively affected, right? To be explored in long run. So in terms of globalization, you can see some country, especially those that had low technology, low infrastructure, everything, the least developed country, you will find that their condition may be even worse, right? That who are foreign direct investment may not go there, so they may, when the, the world is integrated, when you have a uh, free trade agreement among the developed and developing country, they just ignore the less developed country, so this less developed country will become worse and worse and worse. Right. So there's still uh, uh, some win and lose, but in the long run, in the long run, when everybody develop, and then in this in this case, this globalization school believe that if this less least developed country will also open up the economy for foreign direct investment, they have market reform, they have deregularization, liberalization, they can also gradually benefited from uh, inter global interconnectedness, right? especially in terms of economic, right? in this case, free trade, all these things. Right? So these views are opposed by, and just both will also agree social protection policy will be difficult to maintain. Right? If you have globalization, right? social protectionary policy is very really hard to maintain. You mean you want to have tax on certain, let's say you want to have tax on uh, foreign car, you want to tax them 200% to protect your domestic car, then the foreign government will actually, or the World Trade World Trade Organization will impose sanction on you, so you will be severely affected. Therefore, uh, okay, you will not dare to impose this so high uh, tax. Okay. Okay.